Hey guys, it's Jamie from Real Steel. Um, I know it's been a month of Sundays since I've posted anything, but, well, I've had a lot going on. Um, some medical stuff and some family stuff. And this little thing called winter, which I don't have a heated garage, so I haven't been able to really work or post videos. Anyway, today we're back on the old Brown Fury. You can see I'm kind of sitting here beside it. Um, it's up on stands. I've been getting some stuff done. Um, little Tinker Toy stuff. Uh, let me uh, show y'all what I got done. As you can see, I've got the speedometer cable in. Not a huge, huge fan of those housings, but they do work. Um, it's engaged and everything. I put a new O-ring on the cable. And got neutral safety switch changed, but as you can see from the new electrical tape, wasn't without a little bit of wiring. That's kind of what happens around here. Uh, it's not just such a simple job. And then I got the shift linkage put up back in. I had to take that out when I switched columns. Now I'm almost done down here, but there is a missing link. Yeah, kind of got a little Bluetooth drive shaft action going here. I sent one out to be redone, but turns out there was something wrong with it and uh, they weren't able to shorten it, so I've got to find a drive shaft for it. But I think once that's done, I can actually drive it. Now let me take y'all up top and I'll show you what I now, As you can see, I've got the rad in, power steering hoses set up and, you know, the power steering belt and stuff on, uh, fan in, and got the upper hose on, but it's at this angle. Uh, it's not hooked up yet because we've got to flush the motor. And uh, I'll show y'all how I do that here in just a little bit. But the biggest thing is I got the hood on and I got it on ball by myself. Uh, let me show you a couple of pictures of how I did that. Yeah, as they say, uh, work smarter, not harder. And uh, thank goodness for dueling chain hoist. Biggest deal is, I decided on some wheels and tires. Now the fronts are 225.70, 15 tires, and I'm really a fan of those. I, you know, wasn't sure. Wheels are 15 by 7 Fifth Avenue wheels, and just some dog dishes I had. Now the backs, those are a little bit fatter. At first I wasn't sure how I was going to like them, but those are 235.70, 15s. And, and honestly, they fill it out, fill the wheel well out pretty well. Like I say, I wasn't sure about the size, but I kind of like them. Now, I've only got two mounted, and of course, this one goes flat, so I'll find two more. But uh, I think this is the stat, is what I'm going to go with 225s up front, 235s out back. Now, unfortunately, I found a little more weight reduction when I pulled the gas tank and cleaned the trunk out. Um, yeah, I do it the vice grip garage way and just pretend I didn't see it, but when it's kind of staring in your face and yelling at you, hey, look at me, uh, kind of can't ignore it and pretend I didn't see it. Um, I don't think you're supposed to be able to see the tire through the, uh, trunk opening there, but, eh, that's the way she goes with older cars sometimes. Now, I never realized how fat these wheel wells were on these B-bodies, so I could stuck, stuff an even bigger tire in there if I wanted. Now, to fix it, I've got a bunch of these 18-gauge steel panels from some AC units I tore apart, and I've got some shelves, so I'm going to cut, beat, and hammer, and whatever, and try to make something look decent, yeah, even on the quarter panel. Um, been watching a lot of Fitzy's fabrication videos, and, well, he makes it look easy, so might as well give her a try. And you can see with all the junk over here, I've still got some weight reduction even over here. But there is a plus, though. The frame rails are in good shape. So we got that. But anyway, let's get this thing down and get the motor flushed and see if she's going to hold cool. All right, now, I've got it basically set up. Now, the reason this hose is sticking five feet in the air it's basically that acts like a radiator plug. Now you know the physics. If I put water in the cap, water's not going to travel that high without, you know, a miracle happening. So that's how we're going to do it. But I think the first step is we got to see if we can put some fire in the hole. Now I didn't, might have flooded it, but hopefully not. We'll see if we can get her to run. Come on, baby. 
get my water set up here I will bring y'all back and show you what we got going on all right guys so what we're going to do sorry I'm one-handed is I'm gonna uh, put this water hose in the radiator and we're gonna fill her up and I'll show you where we go from there all right got the water released now now there's no thermostat so it's just gonna fill up and pop out the upper hose there hopefully now, I did flush this block a little bit, but, okay, maybe we're hydro-locked here. Okay. Now, it should, now, there should be no blockage there. So, all right, let me reset. As there was no blockage, just the, uh, bunch of air in the system. So, what we're going to do now hopefully spin the key and this thing will start there we go now notice it pumping guys so I had to reset there things didn't work quite right um, I guess that's how it goes sometimes I guess on my truck the radiator sets higher than a car, but now you notice that this is flowing out the upper hose really well. What that's doing is flushing the block. Now, I'm going to start this thing and use the water pump like a pump. Well, maybe, if it ain't got no... Yeah, it's being stubborn. It's being stubborn. like a pump. water's off. Uh, what that did was basically just uh, make sure the block was completely free of debris and the radiator too. I mean the coolant that looked good, it looked real good when I drained it, but I just wanted to, you know, as a precaution. Now next step is I'm going to drain the radiator and I'm going to put a thermostat in it and then put some water in it and we'll see if we can bring it up to temperature. Make sure we ain't got no leaks. Hey guys, got uh, air blood out of the system, got coolant in it. Now we're just gonna bring her up the temperature and see what we got going. And hopefully, with any kind of luck, we ain't got no leaks. So, we'll see you here in a little bit. All right, guys, uh, she seems to be up to temp. I don't really see any leaks. Well, that's a good thing. Here I was worried about a few things. Um, it does have a stumble. I think that's the ignition. I'll have to check it out. But uh, they were running 20. It's fluttering a little bit with the mist. Might be that coil. The coil has a dent in it. But for the carb, I did rebuild it, but it, I don't know that it's right. Got it tuned as good as I can get it. But seems to be doing all right. Smoke is the oil off the valve covers. So, so far, so good. Now, 
keeps running good, no leaks, and I'll go ahead and drain the water out of it tonight, just in case it gets chilly again, and I'll replace it with coolant. And that's the reason that I did water. I didn't want to waste coolant if I was going to have a bunch of leaks. But, I mean, so far, so good. Uh, temp seems to be... And I think we're about out of gas. I think that's the problem. I believe we're out of gas. But, I mean, temp looks good and everything. So, it's running about quarter. I mean, that's not terrible. It wasn't rising or anything, so... Yeah, we're out of gas. But, so far, I guess I'd call that a success. I mean, that's pretty good. Let's get rid of that annoying buzzer. I don't like those things. The only thing I like them for is key on. Or, uh, lights on and door open. But, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up here in just a second. Hey guys, that'll be, that'll do it for this episode here. Um, it's kind of a bang-up episode. I Things really didn't go 100% right. But, in the end, we did make some good progress. And really, the test run was successful. So, next step is, I gotta fix that Bluetooth drive shaft. And I think we're gonna take this fella for a drive. For the first time in 35 years, 36 years, I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching, and uh, if you had enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe. Um, I'm kind of slow, going to be slow putting videos out, but I do got a couple other projects uh, coming up. I might just do a walk around my next video of uh, some projects I got coming up. So, And if I get 500 subscribers, I'm going to be building a truck for the No Name Nationals in... Uh, Sykeston, Missouri later on this year. So I got a little sh junkyard pulled short bed truck. And uh, yes, I bought it out of the junkyard. And that one. And then I got that three-quarter ton over there uh, out of the same junkyard. So you can kind of say, I like junkyard vehicles. But anyway, uh, until we see you on the next episode, we'll catch y'all on the flip side. See ya.